Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Good evening, and welcome to Cut the Tape. Uh, today we've cut the tape on a beautiful Riceling, uh, from 2018. I don't even know how to say any of this. This is, uh, Weinkellerie, Saint, Saint Michel. As long as it's wet, right? Just a little sip right there. This is more of a breakfast wine. You know, before 9 a.m. Just kidding. All right, so today, uh, you know, last time I opened that Cyberverse, uh, the Build-A-Figure, I opened the Optimus Prime, and I was, just, I was really, really impressed with it. I don't know if it's because everything Cyberverse so far has been so young-oriented that it's really not appealed to me, and it just feels... It, it just feels very, very, not kid, but almost toddler-centric. That that Optimus Prime from the Build-A-Figure, um, it came from this set where you can build McAdams. It just blew my mind. So, I wanted to take an opportunity to open two Cyberverse sets today. It's uh, Transformers Cyberverse Battle for Cybertron Quintesson. This comes with uh, Shockwave and Prowl. It's got a Quintesson, whose head you press down and it spins. It's it's stylized. It's not a G1 Quintesson. Stylized. But it does seem to have uh, some uh, ball joints for uh, tentacles. And it seems to have two helmets that fit over the character's heads, I, I guess, to control them. Uh, you know, it's kind of like that star in uh, DC Comics. You get it on your face and now the star controls you. Uh, and then there's Cyberverse, Battle for Cybertron, Shark Con set. Um, I don't know if this is a Target exclusive. I think it's a Target exclusive. It comes with a hot rod painted in black. It's awesome. This is an awesome colored hot rod. And it comes with uh, three little Shark Decons. The Shark Decons, um, I don't think these are new molds. I think these are the tiny turbocharger ones uh, that are just... Um, repurposed for this set so it comes with uh th two green and one orange painted shark Decon. so that's cool um this hot rod i think this is the the one that comes like carded but it's like an open card it, it's it's younger it's even it's like the activators one you know where it's like pretty intuitive transformers it's like a spring-loaded um, I haven't opened any of those yet. This one's called Fusion Flame Hot Rod. Or is it just... Oh, yeah, okay. Wow, look. It says Fusion Flame. So I guess that's that's the Fusion f Flame, which is the spinning saw. But then it says Stealth Force Hot Rod. And Stealth Force was originally for Dark of the Moon, which was the uh, mid-transformation sequence. So it's kind of like Mask where like the guns pop out of the vehicle mode but it's still a vehicle all right we're gonna we're gonna do this one first i honestly didn't think i would get excited for cyberverse at all ever like in perpetuity but here i am uh i will say there is some cool shark con art that is that is some cool artwork on there. There there was there was some attention paid to the set, and I don't know if that's because of an exclusive or just like the mentality of how to approach Cyberverse has changed. But there there has been some some improvements. Alright. 
We have instruction booklet. No words. It just has no, it doesn't even say start, change, finish. Like, do you want it? It just has numbers. And no bio. Once again, no bio and does not direct me to a website for, for bios. Um, I, I'm going to assume this is an episode of the show that's represented here, maybe. So this is cool. This is some this is some pretty cool artwork right here. Um that's a keeper. We can repurpose that. Right now I'm in the middle of designing uh two uh I have French doors here in the basement that open out to the backyard and that's I'm replacing them with stained glass and it's going to be a Transformers iconography on the stained glass doors. So this is this is some interesting art. I'm still in the process of designing that. All right, so we have our Sharpticons. We have our Hot Rod. Man. All right. You know, when I first got this set, I thought this was the regular del deluxe hot rod, which I needed because I only found one in stores and, and you know, I don't open something until I have two of them. So I, I have the regular deluxe cyberversed hot rod, but I, I was, yeah, this is the more younger one. So this is my first time actually handling one of these cyberverse toys. One of the, uh, uh, again, they're like automorph. I don't, I don't know what you call these. It's a it's a whole subline, and there's like a ton of variations on on the packaging. So it looks like you just spin, and it transforms, and it becomes that. That this this is like 1980s Trans Am. Like this this is this is really cool. If there was like a Generations hot rod that was black like this with flames, it would look like Ricochet. But a black hot rod is cool. A black hot rod is cool. So I just take it, spin it around. And see, for a kid, that's a cool transformation. That's a cool That's a cool thing for a kid. I'm not gonna shit all over this. It's got some head articulation, all right. It's got some arms waving around. All right, all right, man. It's for a kid, but I am uh, also in the middle of building a Sharktacon display, so I love my troop builders, so I have a ton of Sharktacons. So I have the Hard Hero Unicron statue, I have the old third-party Quintessons in front of it, and then I just have all these different Sharktacons from all these different lines, from Generations, G1, all the third-party ones, just kind of crawling, climbing out from, from uh, around Unicron to the front of the glass case. All right, so these guys are in there. Yeah, I think these are definitely the uh, tiny turbo chargers, which are really tough to find. And the, you know, the only place I found those so far in the wild is at Best Buy. All right. This is like a little baby shark to con. Baby shark to con to do, do, do. Baby shark to con to do. do, do. All right, let me just, it just kind of flips down. Yay, yay, I'm transforming. Yeah, oh, it's not so much a Sharktacon as it is a uh, Scraplet. Mm. It's not bad. I, I like it because it fits uh, with my Sharktacon display case. And and I'm just going to have them in shark mode. Urgh. I'm a Sharktacon. There's some interesting detail here on the side of the legs. It's almost like 
uh, look like tiny missiles, but it's like the missiles that go on Ravage. It looks like the G1 animation Ravage missiles on the side of his legs. And then he has a Decepticon symbol on his chest. So I guess it's official. Sharkticons are Decepticons. Then again, Gnaw and G1 had a Decepticon sticker. But it was the 80s, man. It was like the Wild West. Alright. Quintesson Judge. Now this one really should have a bio on it. Quintesson Judge. W what is he judging? Is it Judge Reinhold? I don't know. Again, there's there's no look. You have all this negative space here. This is this is where the bio goes. At least at least for him. This is where the bio goes. So second time in the in the line. Overall, the first one was Alpha Quintesson in the Energon line. So here we go. Quintesson number two. And Alpha Quintesson ended up being a good guy, if I recall. If I know my Energon history. So it's got... Um, International Disclaimer, it's got a thicker, there we go, it's got a thicker instruction booklet because there are three characters in here. So Prowl is on one side, Shockwave is on the other, and then, I don't even know what Shockwave turns into, it's like a, it's like a spider cannon, he, tr he transforms into Worthless, that, if, that is what he is. He transforms into worthless. I just when you have a, when you have a shockwave figure and it turns into like that spider cannon, that that is worthless. That's all the instructions. It's just an arrow pointing to the top of the head of Quintesson. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right, let's take out Prowl first. Why are we taking out Prowl? Just because I wanted to see this helmet. There it is. It comes right off. So I think um, I think these are new Prowl and Shockwave figures. Because they're not like anything else in the line that I have seen. They're too small for the Deluxes. And they're too big for the Automorph stuff they're too big to be these or too small they don't have it they don't have the gimmick that this has so they're not part of that line so i think these are made specifically for these little helmets and look there's like um little plugs here and there's two plugs on the helmet and you plug them on so the helmet is not necessarily interchangeable with the other figures in the line i wonder if that's story wise in the show and something that only affects these two characters like the Quintesson infects a Decepticon and an Autobot this is this is why we need bios on packaging not everyone has the show available to them if you're some kid in another country that doesn't have access to the animation and I give myself an example I speak from first-hand experience I grew up outside the United States and I didn't have all the cartoons that the three people who are watching this podcast necessarily had we got our cartoons years later years after they had broadcast I remember walking into a specialty shop and seeing Power Master Optimus Prime and thinking holy crap what's Optimus doing here he, he died. That wasn't even in the show anyway. But, like, I never saw the return. Of, like, I never saw anything past a few episodes of... You know what? The only... It was Five Faces of Darkness. I didn't see anything beyond Five Faces of Darkness for several years. 
and I didn't have the movie on, on uh, VHS tape. I didn't have any episodes on VHS tape. So for many, many years, as passionate as I am about Transformers, I had no access to any of their entertainment. I just had the toys that I had brought with me to South America, the few toys that actually got released in South America, and then uh, after a few years, I found a specialty shop that would import uh, American toys. So they had like Thundercats, they had uh, uh, Transformers, G.I. Joes. All right. So it's clunky. It's got some fins here, or some tentacles. A little bit of improvement from Alpha Quintesson. But uh, Alpha Quintesson, they were uh, pliable. It looks like... This looks like the squids from the Matrix. It, it does seem reminiscent of the Quintessons, like... In the 80s, this is this is how they would have looked. They wouldn't have looked like the movie if there were if there was a Quintesson toy. It probably would have looked something closer to this. So you just press on top, and it switches. Uh, I believe the heads are Vanity. Um, that one is um, Fun. That one is Lust. That one is. Uh, uh, an internet troll, and that one's uh, GOP. So, you know, all the faces of evil right here. I wonder if this somehow fits on. No. Huh. So this is a brick in a different shape. That's what this is. That's what this Quintesson is. It's a brick that doesn't have the shape of a brick. It's just a brick that doesn't, has a unique shape. As for the prowl, pretty basic, but Compared to uh, other Cyberverse stuff, it's uh, it's still an improvement. It's not as good as that Optimus from the Build-A-Figure set. And speaking of that Optimus, I went ahead and I opened another character. I opened up Shockwave from the McAdams set. And uh, it was not as exciting as the Optimus. And I, I think that's because Shockwave just turns into uselessness. That's not bad. I mean, you know, that's pretty easy for a kid to transform. And, and when I say kid, I mean, you know, like a six-year-old. That's, that's pretty good. I think my eight-year-old would be bored with this. And I think my five-year-old wouldn't be intrigued by this. Because there's no spring-loaded. There's no weapon. There's no... It, this is just a transformer. This is just a, a regular, plain transformer. Which there's nothing wrong with. But... I don't think the five-year-old would be into it, and I don't think my eight-year-old will be into it because she's into more of the advanced stuff. Plus, it's not a girl. I could tell her it's a girl. Um, interesting note. At one point, uh, someone was pitching for, I think, movie three for Dark of the Moon. I think it was Aaron who was pitching that Barricade would come back, but it was actually Prowl in disguise the whole time. So Barricade pulls up, and the, Auto the Autobots are like, whoa, we got a blast, and what's he doing here? And, uh, like, part of the head transforms, and it's Prowl in disguise the whole time. Which explains why Barricade wasn't at the final battle, and or on the highway battle in the first movie. But that, that never came to pass. Alright, so there you have it. We, we cut the tape on things. The, the first one was more exciting I don't know if we should cut the tape on this Bumblebee because that shockwave left a uh, bad taste in my mouth. But I will say this is a very uh, close to screen accurate Bumblebee, which I like. I like my screen accuracy. Um, I think I'll save this for just me and my girls. We'll, we'll open that later. All right. Thank you so much. Be nice to each other. 
Remember, register to vote. I'm not telling you who to vote for. Just register to vote. And then go use that right. Wherever you are. I hope you're well. Take care. Bye-bye.